Alright, so this video is going to be different than most of my other videos. The other videos either demonstrate a certain functionality or a certain type of subsystem like an inventory system or a skill tree. This one is looking at a single type of statement and the reason why is because the if statement, while it's a staple of programming languages, it's very complex the way it's handled in C Sharp particularly because of the usage of parentheses and it can just one parenthesis makes it not work but it's vital that you can get if statements to work because it allows you to be able to in a single statement check for a whole bunch of different uh, values to see if a, a certain amount of conditions have been met so I haven't done anything and there's really not going to be much visual here I'm just going to put a white box in here just so you can see that the if statements work because what we're going to do is whenever I, I type an if statement you'll see that um, I'll do something in the box like maybe I'll change its color or something like that so let's get started so we'll click on that we'll choose add component new script call it if then For those of you who are new to programming, when the if statement was originally around, like in the original versions of BASIC, you would type in if, you'd put in the conditions, and then you'd type in the word then. You don't have to use then anymore. You simply put the uh, actions on a another, or the subsequent actions on uh, another line between brackets. So, we're going to create ra uh, you know, random variables just something to uh, check and manipulate. So first thing we're going to do is let's just we're going to use a get component statement and when the condition is right we're just going to change the color. Okay so what I'm going to do is going to zoom in a little bit because it's again like I said this is really unlike some of my other videos this one is really heavily about syntax and not you know kind of broad strokes how to do a certain routine this is really getting to the nitty-gritty so let's create a variable we'll do say an integer and it'll just be the variable a and we'll set it to zero So, here's the syntax. Whenever you do an if statement, the entirety has to be inside of parentheses. So, if you're looking to see if a equals zero, the whole thing has to be in parentheses. Now, here's one of the little idiosyncrasies I want to point out. You have to use two equal signs. Why? Because it's C-sharp. I'm presuming that's why you have to use the double equal sign is to let the um, compiler know that you're not trying to change the value, you're checking the value. So if you're looking to see if a value is equal, you have to use the double equal sign. So if a is equal to zero, and it is, then this should be red. And just to prove that it's working, we'll look for a condition that isn't true. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remark that out just so we have it as one of the types of ifs. Now you might be checking two variables. This is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. And I c could never get this right at first. So, as I said, the entire thing needs to be set, uh, excuse me, the entirety of, except for the if itself, the value or values that you check in need to be surrounded by parentheses. So, say you're trying to check for two value variables. Whenever you're checking for more than one, you do the double ampersand. 
Why is it a double? Because it's C sharp. I honestly have no idea why you have to use two instead of one. But that's the great thing. If you know that's what you have to do, then it really doesn't matter why. You just know, okay, I could use two of these. And you get on with your life. So, the individual values have to be surrounded by parentheses, but then the whole thing, like I said, the whole thing has to be surrounded by parentheses. So if A is equal to zero and B is equal to zero, then it should change it to red. And it is. So we will copy that. Again, we mark it out so we have a running list of everything that we've done. Now, let's do, instead of and, let's do or. So that is, I believe it's called the pipe, and it is above the backslash. So on most keyboards, that should be the button above the enter key, and you hold shift. And just like the ampersand, you gotta do a double. So like I said on my keyboard, it's above the backslash, which is just above the enter key on my keyboard. So just, like I said, you got to do a double. So if one or the other is true, then do it. So it worked. Make this false. Still works because it's an or. Now we'll make this one false as well. And so now it stops working. Now you can actually combine ands and or. So in other words, you want one variable to be true and one of a couple other variables to be true, but they don't all have to be true. So in that case, that's where another set of parentheses come in. So let's say you want we'll add another variable here. So you want A to be true and you want B or C to be true. So A has to be true. Well, A has to be, I'm sorry, I keep saying true. A, in this case, A equals has, has to be one and either B or C have to be equal to a certain variable. Now, this is where it gets really complicated. So, first, as I said, each individual component is surrounded by parentheses. The whole bloody thing has to be surrounded by parentheses. And lastly, since you're saying or from B or C, you have to put parentheses around those. And this was really one of the examples I really wanted to get to when uh, I was thinking about this video. Because you can combine and and or. You just have to use the parentheses to, dis to let the, the compiler know which ones are is the or referring to. You could do the opposite. You could say and A and B or just C. Not sure why you would, but just want to get the syntax right. So if A is equal to one, so right now this won't work. So always want to see it work and then we can break it to show that it doesn't work. So if A is equal to zero and B or C is equal to zero. So let's set C equal to one. And it 
marked. So what we're going to do is we'll switch this. I do know that I've done something like this in one of the projects I'm working on, but to explain it would probably take an entire video, so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to give that specific example, but it does come up. Okay, so we swapped. B is, B is no longer true. C is true. Okay. Now what we're going to do is both of these are going to be true. This one won't be, and it won't work. There's nothing wrong with the statement, don't get me wrong. The statement is still correct. It's just the conditions are not being met. See, it's white. So what's going on here is it's saying if this is true and one of these. Well, the problem is this one's not true, so it doesn't matter how many of these are right. This condition is not being met. So, like I said, I, I've come across situations where I need to do that. It just, it would really take too much to explain it here. Now we're just going to tweak this a little bit. If we want it to be A and B or just C. Now that, like I said, I can't really think of a, a case. So we have to do you have to move that extra parenthesis from in front of B and from the end. So now, so here's one value, here's another value. They're combined, they're both uh, combined with the and, so you need parentheses uh, surrounding them. This one needs parentheses surrounding it. And then you have the final set of parentheses surrounding the whole thing. So if A and B are true, or just C is true. So first we'll have them all work. Okay. Now we'll make this not meet the conditions. And it's still going to work because A and B do work. Lastly, if we break one of these and make this, okay, I believe this should work because it's saying both of these or just this one. So this grouping of these two together fail because they're not both right, but this one is right, so this should still work. Excellent. But now if we break this one, it won't work. Because in this case, this grouping isn't true because one of them is wrong and this one is wrong. There we go. 